Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. This is the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X Video Build Guide Series. Do you want to play and live stream any game at 1080p or 1440p? Do you want to create 4K video content, 3D animation, or multitask lots of programs? You've come to the right place. This is part two of a three-part video series on this build. In this video, the camera is going to be overhead and it's a step-by-step -step build process. CPU onto the motherboard, storage, RAM into the case as we put it together. This is an edited version of a three-hour live stream that was done on the channel previously, but we understand that most people don't want to watch a three-hour video to see a computer put together, so this is cut down meant just to show the important parts. In part one of this video series, we talked about the parts overview, why we chose them, the benefits they provide, and pros and cons you will get from going up and down in the part scale. In part three, coming up very soon, is the benchmarks, performance, sound, noise, etc. testing on this actual built computer. So stay tuned for that. Links to everything you're going to see in today's video will be down in the video description below. Those are affiliate links to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay. Using those links while shopping supports the channel at no extra cost to you and is very much appreciative so we can bring you these detailed guides. Furthermore, I want to say a big thank you to Gigabyte. Gigabyte sponsored this video and sent us some of these very nice things you see on the desk here. And frankly, their support is greatly appreciated because it's expensive to build all these computers. Part one of this video guide series is linked in the video description below. Detailed parts guide what's included and why. However, a really quick overview for those of you who either forgot it, didn't watch it, don't want to watch it, and just want to see a computer being built. In short, this is a $2,000 build, and you do not have to spend $2,000 to get a Ryzen 7 3800X and an RX 5700 XT. We have a premium cooler, premium fans, premium power supply, premium SSDs. It is a premium build designed for an amazing experience all the way around. First video, I talked about that in detail, so I won't here, but in short, we have a Ryzen 7 3800X CPU up to 4.5 gigahertz, eight core, 16 threads, Zen 2 CPU, 32 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz CL16 RAM. We have a total of four terabytes of SSD space. Gigabytes X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, just over $200, very nice board. Gigabyte also provided us with their gaming overclocked card, the AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT, eight gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. Power supplies, well, you certainly need a power supply for your computer, 750 watt, 80 plus gold modular power supply. Cooler Master was kind enough to provide us with this Masterbox MB511 non-RGB case. Covered this previously in another video. Great airflow on the front, great airflow on the top plenty of airflow in the back for about $50 or so. That is pretty sweet. We did replace the stock cooler with a Noctua NH-U12S Black Chromax Edition. Now a Wraith Prism cooler comes with the CPU and you could absolutely totally, of course, use that. However, it's a little bit loud and it doesn't quite give you max boost speed, especially on the 3800X. This thing is cool and quiet and allows maximum boosting and frankly, this is a blackout build anyway. I didn't need the RGB, so I was perfectly happy with it. We also installed four black Chromax swap fans from Noctua, two in the front, one on the top, and one on the back, which makes this thing an absolute silent build. It is really, really nice. Those fans with that much airflow with this hardware turn so slowly, you're going to see in part three of this video series just how quiet it really is. As I said, this is a $2,000 build or it was when I built it and set all this up. Of course, prices change over time, and they certainly change if you're not in the United States. All of my pricing is based upon pricing in the US at Amazon and Newegg in most cases. As I said in the first video, custom PCs are custom. If you wanna change any of these components, consider this a starting guide for a premium system with premium fans, premium cooling, a very nice motherboard, a premium power supply, etc. 
If you want to spend less and lower the quality or lower the levels of all the components, you can certainly do so. If you want to spend more, it should probably have a Ryzen 9 in there, frankly, if you're going to go above this budget. In fact, you can fit a Ryzen 9 into this budget if you take a few other things out, such as some of the extra storage. But this is a very nice computer that will pretty much do what 95 plus percent of what anybody needs to do with a machine. Well, I think that's plenty of talking. Well, except for the build portion where there'll be lots more talking, but now we're gonna put the camera overhead and we're gonna take the entire recording of the build. And we're gonna shrink that down as much as possible to just the key steps. This is the first time we've tried doing this, taking a raw recording and shrinking it down. So I would love to hear what all of you think of this. Comments, feedback, suggestions in the comments section below. I'll be reading them to see what you all think of this. But for now, enjoy. What do we have in the box here? We have, oh, they gave us a drink coaster. Oh wait, nope, that's a driver CD. Suggestion, if you don't have a nice anti-static building surface like this awesome Gamers Nexus mat, you can actually use your motherboard box. Well, now that's a nice looking motherboard. We'll see if he'll come out or if it's gonna be another eight weeks of winter. That's a groundhog in the spring, but who cares? Yes, we know. Oh, so close, but yet so far. First thing we're gonna do is stick our CPU in here. That's absolutely our first step. This is our Ryzen 7 3800X. Match the corner with the square with the triangle on the CPU and gently put that in place. Everybody take a look at how nice, that is heavy. So because of the length, we need to move this. Check this out, two terabyte 860 Evo. We actually do have, for those of us just joining us, we do have another drive we're gonna be putting in. So this is a one terabyte PCI Express Gen 4. This is a two terabyte SATA SSD. This is not NVMe, but for game drive, that's fine. And then I also have a one terabyte Cuvo. So we have our two uh, SSDs installed. We have our CPU installed, and we're ready to put the case on the desk. Masterbox 511. MB511. They provide this handy tool right here. Um, it's a screwdriver tip and it's for these mounting posts. So you stick it in here and then we'll take our regular screwdriver and this is how we're going to put mounting posts inside the case. This is hard to do without actually getting in the way of the camera. This plate here is where I'm going to install my SSD. And that doesn't want to come off. And that's what we have screwdrivers for. So we line up our screw holes on this. Everything's slower when you have to talk. Boom, there we go, that's sweet. Cable management for the win. I'm gonna run that through there. And then this has to be run through there. When you put the 24 pin ATX on, put your fingers behind the board and support. Oh, that goes on real nice. This is our, for our video card that will go in here later. Up here, we have our CPU power connector, which goes right here. Oh, that went on really nicely. Oh, that was easy. So this is cool. Power LED, reset switch, hard drive activity light, speaker, power switch, power LED. We take the front panel connectors, which are labeled, and we look for the power LED. We look for the power switch. Here's the power switch. 
And so we plug it just like so into this. Now these have to be reversed because it's labeled power LED minus and plus. So I just need to turn those around and stuff those carefully into a space they don't want to go into. But it's easier to do it here on this than it is to do it on the board, usually. Come on, go in there, there we go. Then we come over here to the other side and the hard drive LED plus minus, we'll line that up. There we go. And then the reset switch. We just stuff into this side. But it would be nice if front panel connectors just became a single connector, like the audio and the USB. And so this goes straight on the board like that. Wonderful, that is so much nicer. And this is loose, but I'm gonna turn the case over. One nice thing about a smaller case is it's so much easier and lighter to turn around and move around. This is super easy to mess with. That is a Noctua NH-U12S Chroma Black. We are actually going to put two fans here for intake, one fan here for exhaust, and one fan here for exhaust, creating a nice, comfortable airflow throughout the case. And by using Noctua fans, we are going to make for a premium, look at that, quality products, quality packaging. And so the fan blows like that. How do we want to wire this? Right here, through there, and then here onto the case. That was one out of four. I'm sure I've been nervous at times doing that. I'm gonna put a fan up top, replace this exhaust fan. Then we're gonna install the CPU cooler, which will not take very long. RAM, video card, done. Oh, interesting. When I put this here, the CPU connector, I'll have to push that over just a bit. CPU cooler time. Noctua NHU-12S Chroma Max Black. So we need to remove these screws here. So we actually have six of them. So we need our AMD instructions, which I think are going to be this. These. Okay. Yep. And we need the dark spacers for AM4, dark gray. And the light spacers stay in the package. So these go one, two, three, four. Now, this is a bit of a tricky part because you gotta still use the back plate, but it falls off. You guys probably can't see it, but it fell through. So I have to lift this up and pick up the back plate and stick it through the holes. And then you gotta put these posts on. Yeah, I got it. Magnetic screwdrivers for the win. Oh, wait. <laughs> it, it works much better if you put the um, if you, put, if you put these on, actually, you know what? I do need help. The mounting system doesn't suck. The fact that the back plate doesn't stick to the motherboard sucks. Can you imagine how much fun this would be without a magnetic screwdriver? What we have to do is take this clip here and this clip here. And just temporarily take that off. It's actually the same fan that we just put on here. And then we do need thermal paste though. There we go. We should, we should put the verge level of thermal paste on here, honey.
Okay, so our cooler is installed and now we just need to, do I wanna mount it like this or like this? I think I'm gonna put it, oh, the dog's making noise. Cooler's installed. And if I wanna add a second fan, I most certainly can. In fact, we've got another one. Um, but I'm not going to. Let's install the RAM. Hey, look at that, it does not block the RAM slot. There's 16 gigs of RAM. Another 16 gigabytes of RAM. And these all sync up, these are ORS modules, they sync up to the RGB on the board, and I mean, if you wanna RGB the heck out of it. I've used these before, not these exact modules. Okay, everything's in enough, I can go ahead and close up the back. Close this up. I'm buttoning it all up, I'm being brave. This is a Gigabyte Gaming Overclocked RX 5700 XT. So we'll make sure our tab is down. And so now, Tuck this down in there a bit more. Put this like that, tuck this under. Put this in like that. There we go. All I gotta do is put the plastic cover back on, which is very reflective, and if I put it on, then all you'll see is the camera overhead. Let's see what it looks like out of curiosity. Yeah, you can see the camera on the boom overhead, so. I'll put that on in a minute. Thank you all so much for watching all of that. It certainly took a long time to put together. Two gold stars for anybody who watched the entire video without fast forwarding and skipping to the end. Now, if you do wanna see part three early, you will find that on float playing down in the video description below, and it's a great way to support the channel, but that will be coming to YouTube soon enough but it's available for those of you early access over there at the moment. You can also support us, as I mentioned before, by using the links in the video description when you're shopping. And you can also support us by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button by supporting us on Patreon or by subscribing to either myself or my wife on Twitch. If you do so, there's a variety of benefits to all those and every one of them gives you access to the Tech Deals Discord. So if you have any further comments or questions about part selections, uh, leave me a comment over on the comment section of the Tech Deals Discord. That's linked at the very bottom of the video description. And I certainly hope to hear from you over there. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions. Well, you know where the comment section is. That's what it's for. Links in the video description. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think. It's, uh, this is definitely a different style for us of cutting up a long build video into something a little bit shorter is a new thing. I will see all of you very soon in part three of this video build guide series.